Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, June 26, 2013 in Angarco. I'm ready to go here and be covering uh, Syria and other types of news. Uh, Israel, Kissinger says U.S. media lying about Syria. So you say, oh, okay, so Kissinger is a good guy, he's one of us, whatever. Former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger says American media are not telling the truth about the current situation in Syria. I'd take it a step forward or further and say that the mainstream media isn't uh, telling the truth on just about anything. But hey, in the American press, it's described as a conflict between democracy and a dictator, and the dictator is killing his own people, and we've got to punish him. But that's not what's going on, he said during a speech at the Ford School of Public Policy at the University of Michigan. It is now a civil war between sectarian groups, he said. So it's interesting because I kept saying that um, it's not a civil war, it's an invasion by foreign mercenaries. So, uh, you know, as far as the civil war goes, it's turned into that uh, semi between uh, Shias and Sunnis. This, of course, was the design if they didn't get their pre-scribed pre, uh, uh, regime change on time before their little reforms of, what, 2014. So I, I find it kind of funny because I never really believed that it was a quote uprising uh, by the people uh, to throw out a dictator. Um, I also said that it wasn't really a civil war because most of these uh, uh, foreign opposition or fighters, opposition rebels are foreigners. His remarks come as the U.S. has been criticized for fomenting sectarian discord in Syria and broader Middle East by interfering in the nation's internal affairs and backing up insurgencies. So. He says here, elsewhere in his remarks, Kissinger said the outcome I would prefer to see in Syria was a broken up and balkanized country with more or less autonomous regions. Not very surprising news, but nonetheless, U.S.-Russia failed to reach deal. On Syria peace talks, five hours of Geneva talks end without a deal. So, the conference on the civil war was supposed to take place in June, but the only talks that have ever happened in Geneva came today when the U.S. and Russia spent five solid hours trying to reach a deal on the talks. So here are the five hours of talks between the two countries centered on who would be allowed to attend the peace talks, which are a bit short on attendees anyhow since the U.S.-backed rebels have repeatedly ruled out showing up, but Iran might, or at least they're opening, open to attending, so the U.S. is holding, uh, holding up the talks, saying that any appearance by Iran is unacceptable. They say June is already out for talks. It says here UN, the UN has already expressed uh, uh, basically hope for a deal to be reached by July, but there's a good chance that neither of them will come to terms. Syria slams Saudi Arabia for supporting militants. Syria has censored Saudi Arabia for supporting militants against the government of Bashar al-Assad. Saudi Arabia presses U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry for hardline on Syria. A nice little typo there. Saudi Arabia on Tuesday pressed for global action to end Syrian President Assad's regime, telling U.S. Secretary of State Kerry that the civil war has turned into genocide. Kerry met with the leaders of the Sunni Arab monarchy as part of the regional tour in which she has called for greater support for Syria's rebels, but stressed that the U.S. ultimately wanted a political solution, blah, 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 right? Um, it's just, you have the West you know, they're calling it a civil war net, but they're completely backing one side, which is the Sunnis. I'm not saying that the Sunnis are, you know, one is worse than the other. I'm not going to go into that debate, but they're picking a side. They're, they're fomenting this uh, sectarian divide, which is what they wanted. So then they, of course, could say, well, you know, anything that happens that's uh, negative for these, uh, quote, rebels, these Sunnis or Salafis, Wahhabists, will be uh, blamed against uh, Hezbollah or Iran or Russia. Then you have people that are on the ground in Syria and uh, people that are more knowledgeable on the subject that say that uh, these aren't Muslims at all. These are just these are just uh, uh, mercenaries. So uh, I I guess you could say I I would rather go with what I'm saying. What is what it is, which is it's an invasion by a private mercenary force. U.S. shouldn't arm jihadists, rebels in Syria, they are worse than the Nazis. First cousin of longtime critic of Assad says continued foreign intervention uh, would lead to regional war that would include Turkey and Israel. Well, this is a longtime critic of Assad. He says the Islamists won't stop at Syria. Their aim is to spread the revolution throughout the Middle East, and if they're not stopped, the result will be regional war, which Turkey and Israel will also become involved, which is probably part of the plan.
so Jordan King warns against sectarian strife in Syria, a recipe for destruction. So I keep hearing this uh, this week in the news cycles. A divided Syria means an open-ended conflict that would undermine the stability of the region and the future of its people for generations to come. The king, whose country is home to around 500,000 Syrian refugees, said it's not anyone's in interest and tampering with Syria's unity is a recipe for destruction. But, uh, you know, uh, words only mean so much. The actions of what Jordan is doing by creating uh, the unrest inside Syria. And many say he's a Zionist puppet, so... French aid move helps Syria rebels. So France, and this is back in September 2012, they've been arming and funding and doing all kinds of stuff, French, the French have. Uh, so it's ironic when you see articles like this, especially coming after uh, German intelligence, um, I think even the French intelligence, all cited worries, including the, uh, the Russians, were all concerned about these terrorists coming back to their countries that were, uh, like I said, well-trained and armed. So, French police arrest six radical Islamists near Paris. Anti-terror police in France have arrested six people accused of belonging to a radical Islamist cell preparing for attacks. They were planning to commit terrorist attacks targeting well-known figures in France. So, they raised their domestic terror level after it's an intervention in Mali. It's an invasion of Mali, right? And just remember the word terror because we're going to get into that in the next video. The word terrorism, how it's used. It's actually, like I said, when I first started in 2009, it is use really in all reality the last uh, bastions of resistance against this uh, new global order uh, any uh, traditionalist or quote fundamentalist uh, who do not want to go along with it will be considered terrorists so so it's not just screaming Ali Akbar and stuff and blowing up as a suicide bomber it's just a peaceful protest against gay marriage say in France or, or against uh, uh, abortion or something in America the chic uh, Taman hints at unchangeable foreign policy of Qatar. So the new emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim Hamad Al Thani, claimed his country will keep so on supporting the aspirations of the Arab people towards freedom in the face of tyranny, stating that his country did not make these aspirations. So he inherits a Gulf state that, under his father's rule, developed into a political and economic emirate with multi billion dollar investments across the world. Under the outgoing emir, Qatar, along with Saudi Arabia and Turkey, played a role in the Middle East affairs massively out of proportion to its size, becoming a major backer of the Syrian crisis. Army win in Lebanon's Sidon has uh, set sectarian traps as Sunnis. Sheikh uh, Asir, who we just talked about on Monday, Sunni firebrand is on the run with the supporters after the army stormed their compound next to his mosque. That's right, I think they killed like 4 to 14 Lebanese soldiers. He has preached against the Shiite movement. Hezbollah is now openly fighting for Assad, which, like I said, I'm a little skeptical of that. A member of the Syria's minority Alawite sect, an offshoot of Shiite Islam. She's you, they're doing exactly what I was talking about. Uh, maintaining that narrative. They say that's it. The Sunni Shiite trap has fallen. Now only God knows where we're going. All right, next up we have retired singer Fadel Shakir brags about killing two Lebanese soldiers. Retired singer appeared in a video to be recorded, appeared to be recorded two days ago, bragging about killing two soldiers in the Lebanese army during the clashes of Abra and Sidon. So, Africa, U.S. spreads blowback nightmare, so again, not a very big surprise, but says here, if you uh, examine the security situation in Africa, it suggests that in the process of becoming ground zero for uh, a terror diaspora set in a motion in the wake of 9-11 that has only accelerated the Obama years, so it says, recent history indicates that the U.S. stability operations in Africa have increased militancy uh, and militancy has spread. Insurgent groups have proliferated, allies have faltered, and committed abuses. Terrorism has increased, the number of failed states has risen, and the continent has become more unsettled. So, and uh, yeah, the U.N. is actually sending uh, like 3,000 troops to Mali. African Union warns Libya has become an important terrorism transit hub. Ooh, really? Because I was talking about that, what, about a year ago, but that's the point of it, is for the CIA and different uh, agencies and interest to funnel um, uh, funnel weapons and that and, and kind of uh, a crossroads for the terrorist operations, this private uh, terror force, to a smuggling hub. So it's become an important transit hub for terrorists, constituting an extremely dangerous development in the region, an African Union leader said Tuesday in the sidelines of a security meeting in Algeria. 
But to remember, what happened in Mali was a result of what happened in Libya. So they say, we have information according to which some terrorists active in Mali consider Libya as a refuge and a place to regroup. U.S. to blame for tension in Afghanistan, says Karzai. So Karzai blamed the U.S. for tensions in his country by allowing the opening of a political office for Taliban militants in the Qatari capital of Doha. So, wow, man. He's uh, been pretty outspoken lately. Taliban thriving in Afghanistan's opium economy. So, again, not a big surprise. So the Taliban generated around $400 million in 2012 from donations, taxing local economies, and extorting money from drug dealers. Lieberman says Israel must conquer and cleanse Gaza, another split in Israel's coalition. So the foreign, foreign minister Lieberman, still one of the top figures in the Israeli government, an outspoken hawk appeared on Israeli radio and demanded a full-scale invasion of the Gaza Strip to conquer and thoroughly cleanse the Palestinian enclave. Yasha Tidbill says Israel should be Jewish by law. So M.K. Ruth Calderon submits a bill giving Declaration of Independence status a basic law thus formally establishing state of Israel's Jewish character. The bill was proposed as a part of joint efforts with this uh, Haiti Houthi party on a new nation-state bill, formally establishing Israel's a Jewish state. So, like I said, every other country can be a nationalist state as uh, every state, sovereign state right now, is losing their sovereignty. You know, they're completely globalized uh, companies multicultural companies. Almost half of Israeli Arabs believe Palestine will eventually replace Israel. In an annual survey, Arab citizens express increasing estrangement from the country and society, but a desire for a greater integration. The majority of Israeli Arabs feel they would be justified in launching an uh, uprising if their situation did not improve, according to a survey. 31% of Arabs surveyed said they didn't believe millions of Jews were murdered in the Holocaust compared with 28% in 2003. 2003, 65% of Arabs said Israel has the right to exist as a Jewish democratic state, but that number has dropped to 47% in 2012. Israel becomes world, world's sixth largest arms exporter, says a report released on June 24th. Exports increased 74% to $2.4 billion, and their market share has risen from 24 to 3.5%, mainly with sales to India. Cyprus considering Russian military use of airbase and port facilities. Financially strapped Cyprus is looking at allowing Russian military aircraft to use an airbase in this Paphos, Paphos, the country's defense minister said this weekend. Uh, we do know that, uh, what, you also have British uh, uh, intelligence operating out of there. Russia plans further modernization of Armenia base. They're considering its military base in Armenia to be vital for the South Caucasus countries. National security will continue to strengthen it with modern weaponry. Russia's first uh, Mistral class ship, Stern Launch. So there's the picture of it. So the Stern portion of the first Russian Mistral class helicopter carrier has been launched in St. Petersburg and will set sail to France where its body will be assembled, huh? All right. <laughs> I love that global economy. It is due to be completed in October, and its twin will be delivered in 2014. This is about the extent that I'm going to cover this issue. Russia, China dismiss Obama outrage at Snowden's escape. China's state media praises the whistleblower. U.S. officials continue to rail at Russia and China and Ecuador and indeed anyone else even nominally involved in the escape of whistleblower Edward Snowden. That seems likely to continue, but Russia and China don't seem impressed. Report says 36 killed after a knife gang attacks. China police station knife wielding assailants killed nine policemen and 17 civilians in a bloody attack. That after 11, 10 attackers were shot dead in the western China, uh, yeah, on Wednesday. So, so China likes this because it keeps uh, a spotlight off their surveillance and their big brother state and also their police state. Norway overtakes Russia as Europe's biggest gas supplier. So big news, Russia lost its position as the main supplier of gas to the EU last year as Gazprom exports fell by 10%, knocked down by coal and high prices. So high gas prices in the EU coupled with cheap coal from the U.S. have made coal a more attractive fuel for power stations. And just imagine if uh, they get what they want in Syria, running like a pipeline from Israel and all that and, and into Europe to Turkey. You know, that's, that's, that's aimed at uh, Russia. Energy companies entering war on terror. So, a Norwegian company is forming a special operations division to handle emergency operation response to terrorist attacks on their natural gas facilities. The militarization of Gazprom, go check that out, links will be posted. 
the U.S. has actually approved natural gas exports. The nine largest private armies in the world, what are they fighting for? Other corporate private interests. That's, that's why they're gutting nation states' armies so they can have their own private special operation forces. Mercenaries, thank you.